Hey coaches, in today's video I'm going to go over three RPOs you should run in your power scheme. Hey coaches, Coach Mackey here and welcome to my channel. If this is the first time visiting my channel, welcome. And this channel is about the spread offense and then we talk about RPOs, passing schemes, running schemes, tempo, any and everything that has to deal with the spread offense so that we can get better as coaches. If that is something that interests you, please hit that subscription button down below. And if you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. We had an H-back, I know, before the season started in fall camp, and we were had, we had the power scheme going on. We had a lot the counter and a lot of different things. And then once school started, the week zero, our kid got kicked off the team for doing something stupid in, in school. So that's why we had to go to the four wide, and we really didn't do this. But in the spring and the fall, our power scheme was actually working really well because we had three RPOs that we used to control the box so that we had six on six in there and we had the running lanes. Now I'm going to go over the three that we use. If y'all do anything different, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from y'all. And before we get into it, Happy New Year's. The first RPO depends on who's your better receiver. Is it the slot or is it the outside? Because that factors into what you're going to throw first. Now, for us... We have two good guys out here, so we'll switch it up, but I'll go over both of them. First things first, I have power drawn up. It's just like how everybody else runs power in the system with an H-back. We like to have three by one when we ran our power, so this is how we do it. Uh, the wide receivers, we, we try to keep things the same backside when we have an RPO route, and it's based on what do you have. So this guy right here either has a hitch or he has a slant depending upon the corner's alignment, what is the corner doing, and whatever. Now, the RPO side is this right here. This is who we're keying. We always teach our quarterback, you are keying the guy that's head up, tag, slightly inside the Y, and we'll tag two screens to it. The first one is our now screen, which everybody runs. If our guy, outside guy is the, is the man, we'll run our now screen where he is kicking out the corner. The R now is taking a one step forward and then he's coming retracing right back down the line we want to throw it the same place if we're running our tunnel screen or our our key two or our bubble quarterback he's riding he's reading this guy if he sneaks in then the quarterback's going to turn disengage sat word and throw it out here to the r if the backer just sits there or he just takes a step and then drops back then we hand the ball off, and that is the first way that we use RPOs to clean up the box. The second one is the same concept, really, is we will run our now screen with our number two. He's just taking one step and then backpedaling. Notice how they're in the same spot for the quarterback. It's really simple for the quarterback. And again, nothing changes for the read. He's reading this guy. If he comes in, then we throw it. If he stays out, we hand it. That's the first RPO. The second RPO is the out fade, and it's kind of a two-parter. And the reason why we like that is we see, when we did this, a lot of too high. So now we know that they're running some kind of quarter scheme, and this really affects them. And this is kind of like a home run ball, is we would run a three-step out and then a mandatory outside release vert. And the quarterback is still reading the same guy. He's reading. This is the initial read. So if this guy stays, then all the quarterback has to do is just hand the ball off. If this guy comes in, then the quarterback is going to disengage, and then he's going to find this corner. Most of the time, if you play the rules right, he's running, so you throw it. If this guy sneaks up, now you have a nice little hole shot, and you can use this as kind of like a, a play-action pass down. That's what we've kind of used, and it really works well. Now, I'm going to be honest, you have to rep the piss out of this in practice and we have a drill that uh, we use all the time where the quarterback IDs number one and number two and we only call this when we know we're going to get too high. There have been times where they spun down and it's kind of dicked us a little bit but for the most part if you use temple, temple, if you use tempo and you know that you're going to get it too high this is a very nice play if you want to kind of a home run ball. Here's the third and final RPO. Sometimes you're going to have teams spin to one high. 
And what I would recommend is if they do this and they have more people in the box than you do, call something else. But I know as coaches, we're kind of dumb and we want to just whip it out and say mine is bigger than yours. So I'm going to throw the ball. I mean, I'm going to run the ball. And if that's the case, if that's what you have to do, what we do and we do that, this is like our number one RPO when we have one high is we run a pick like route. I know defensive coordinators are going to hate this. I'm sorry, but you know, until the uh, refs call it, we're going to keep running it. So what we do is we cheat him in a little bit, and we're going to use their rules against them. So this guy right here is going to run a mandatory outside release, and he's going to aim for the outside shoulder of this safety. We want that safety, whoever is covering him, to turn his hips to the sideline. Let's say the sideline's over here. Turn his hips and run with them. Why? Because then the R is going to come right off the wise butt and he's running a slant and we know that if he's in the box he, we're still keying this is the same guy on the quarterbacks on the tailback side so this is who the quarterback is responsible for this is the unblocked guy so nine times out of ten this guy is going to come that is fine because we have the r running a slant right across his face if this guy drops back or he opens his hips and pushes we still have everybody blocked so that we can run the power and that is our number one go-to RPO against one high. I would advise y'all to run it. If y'all have anything different, please let me know. And the that is the last RPO we tag to our power. All right, so those are the three RPOs we use in our offense when we do the power scheme to control the box. Again, if y'all do anything different, please leave a comment below. I'd love to learn from y'all. This is going to be a major part of our offense next year. I promise I am sticking with the H-back, and if our main one gets kicked off, I'm going to find someone else because, damn it, I really like this now. Uh, before we go, let me just tell you the schedule. I'm going to be doing videos the first and third Saturday of each month. I've got a lot of things going on, so I kind of got to scale back just a little bit. But don't worry, you can hear this beautiful, sexy voice uh, every Tuesday because I started a podcast talking uh, football with Coach Mackey. The link is down below. Click on it. I've got a couple of episodes out already, and I'll be releasing those every Tuesday. Also, I'm going to be doing some things on my blog, writing some more posts, getting that up. So although I'm scaling back on the videos, I'm still putting out great content. And I want you all to follow me because we learn together. And that's what we do here. So until next time, coaches, let's continue to master the spread, score points, and have fun.